Welcome to the online broadcast of the Calvary Temple Church of Barbados. Precious morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our Calvary Temple Community Church online platforms. If you're out there on Facebook or perhaps on YouTube, we take a moment this morning to welcome you on our virtual platforms and thanking you so much for connecting and reconnecting with us. Some of you are there now for the very first time as the word has been spreading concerning the series that we've started as it relates to a biblical view of the end times and uh, much of what the end times will be like as has now been couched within the context of a category seven storm. I know you're familiar with cat one, two, three, four, five, but here's a cat seven storm speaking metaphorically and you will hear a whole lot more about that. So I want to uh, say to you, thank you so much for being part and parcel of our online church here, Calvary Temple Community Church, is located in Groves Six Roads in the parish of St. Philip in the beautiful island of Barbados. My name is Andre Simmons, and it gives me great joy to join with the partners, members, leaders of Calvary Temple, and say thank you for connecting with us once again. God bless you so much, and uh, I want to let you know that we've got some wonderful things coming up, inclusive of the series that uh, I've already mentioned to you. Also, to, to turn back to say thank you to those in the island of Barbados who came out to the drive-in church experience, uh, both the first one and then the sequel, and making those evenings, the, the, the precious evenings and memorable, unforgettable evenings that they were. So thanks to all of you, those who participated, those who helped, those who set up, those who picked down, those who did with the media, those who did with the recording, those who helped, however you helped. Maybe you packed a car, you, you brought some persons. Uh, I want to say thank you for helping to make those evenings very, very memorable. We've had two so far, and I can testify that there will be another one coming to a church near you here in Barbados real soon. So stay close, stay connected to our platforms, and you'll hear a whole lot more about that, especially this is for those in the island of Barbados. I also want to testify to the fact that we had some healings. That's right. Uh, at least two persons in the first instance did come and testify to how God touched them. Nobody laid hands on them. It was the Lord Jesus Christ who showed up on the grounds the first time that we had the uh, drive-in church experience. That was so monumental, so precious. And persons came and told me, interacted with me afterwards and said, Pastor, I'm telling you, I was touched. I came one way and I'm leaving another way. Whether it was the, the kidneys, whether it was the, the knees, God touched them and God healed them. And we're so thankful for that. Uh, the last one, just last Sunday evening here on the grounds, uh, a young lady also testified. She was anemic, uh, went back to the doctor during the course of the week and testified that the, all of the reports that came back, no more anemia that was gone. Look what the Lord has done. I mean, it's good, good, great things happening in a drive-in church experience. Imagine you come in your car and God meets you right there in in your vehicle as you receive the rich gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we are just elated and happy about what the Lord is doing. I want to hurry up and get out of the way. Of course, this morning we have uh, opened up the doors and the resumption of, of, of services, in-person services. So we're excited about that as well. But I want to get out of the way and make room for our worship leader as she will lead us to the King of Kings the Lord of Lords in praise and worship and all adoration unto him. So let me do that right now. If you are not up on your feet yet, this is a good time to share with someone, let someone know what's happening, that Calvary Temple is online and
and that they don't want to miss what's coming down the pipeline. Hallelujah. So I want to get out of the way and welcome Sister Faye Merle, Mrs. Faye Merle, as she will lead us along in praise to the King of Glory. Come on, jump up on your feet, open up your windows, throw open the doors if the weather would permit that wherever you are around the face of the earth and let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. A blessed morning to each and every one of you from all around the Caribbean, all around the world. We are Calvary Temple Community Church of Barbados and we are pleased to be in your face this morning. It is a beautiful day here in Barbados and we are giving God thanks and praises for a wonderful week. Oh my goodness, those of you who were at the driving church, come on, you may not be in a car right now to beep a horn or to flash a light, but wherever you are, just bang on the something, send those emojis at the screen if you had an awesome time at the driving church. What an experience. I am looking forward to the next one trust me <laughs> cannot miss me it was awesome oh my goodness i'm excited to be in the house of god this morning i'm excited to lead you in praise and in worship this first song says jehovah you i trust in you not in horses not in chariots not in governments not in the world health organization or anything we trust in jehovah god as our source only him and i love the ending part where it says so long bye 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 covid huh bye bye i can't wait to dance and to sing and to praise god's name in this place this morning we're saying goodbye to everything we're just shaking it off come on wherever you are stand up and let's magnify the name of the lord hallelujah come on get your dancing praises on let me see you clothe yourself with the garment of praise you didn't know praise is the garment let me tell you this morning put on your garment of praises over the spirit of heaviness that's what the word says come on dance this confuses the enemy as you dance around. Hallelujah. Woo! I can see you over there. Wave your hands at me. Jehovah, you, I trust in you. Oh, Lord, Jehovah, you. I trust in you. I believe, I believe you. I trust in you. Oh Lord, Jehovah, you. Come on, tell him. I trust in you. I believe, I believe you are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders. You are the God all powerful. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Come on, if you believe, just dance wherever you are. Come on, laugh. Make the devil mad. Hallelujah. Jehovah, you, I trust in you. Oh, Lord, Jehovah, you, wave your hands and sing. I trust in you. Tell him, I believe, I believe, I believe you. I trust in you. Oh Lord, Jehovah, you, I trust in you. I believe, I believe you are the God of miracles. You are the God of wonders. You are the God all-powerful. I believe, 
wrong your place. Tell him go from wrong here, man. We have no room for the devil in this place. We have no room for COVID-19, 20, whatever it is. We're casting it one side this morning. And we're lifting up the name of the Most High God. Come on, Calvary Temple. Let's make some noise. So long, bye-bye. Send it away. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrows. So long, bye-bye. So long, come on, send it me. So long, so long. Come on, I can't hear you singing it. Send those emojis up the screen. Come on, so long. Bye bye, bye bye. Goodbye to your sorrows. Goodbye to your shame. Goodbye to your pain. Somebody wave goodbye. Come on, let me say COVID nineteen all the way over yonder solar. Come on, I can hear you singing it in the chat. Bye bye, so long, bye bye, so long. This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I for you and I I'm lost without you this is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe Your holy presence Just living in me This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me And I
Father God. You are the very source of our being. Without you in our lives, where would we be? You are the source. We're desperate for you this morning, oh God. Our souls long after you. Father God, fill us with more of you, more of your anointing, more of your presence, oh God. We bless your name, we exalt you, we magnify you. It's because of who you are that we lift our voices wherever we are in our separate homes this morning to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise, oh God. We bless your name. of who you are I give you glory because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are Lord I worship you because of who you are tell him because because of who you are I give you glory yes I do because of who you are, I give you praise. It's because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Tell him again, that's why I worship you, O oh God. Because of who you are, Jehovah Jireh, yes you are, you are Jehovah Nisi. who you are I give you glory oh yes I do because of who you are I give you praise it's because of who you are come on tell them where you are Lord I worship you Yes, God, that's why I worship you. Because of who? Come on, tell him, has he been your Jehovah Chira? Yes, you provided for me. In the midst of everything, you are Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign. Jehovah Shadow, my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because
morning. Wherever you are this morning, let's lift up a mighty shout of praise unto God. you, O oh God, because of who you are. Lord, I bless your name for all you've done and for all you're doing, for all you will continue to do in our lives. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you praises, O oh God. There is none like unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, glory be to God. We give you praise, Lord, because of who you are. We bow down, we worship you, we praise your holy, wonderful, matchless name. And we give you all the honor and all the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Hallelujah. And you are there on Facebook. You're on our page and you're, you're, you're taking in this ministry. You're on our YouTube channel. The spirit of God is speaking to you. And in this atmosphere, signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. I declare that to be your reality. Can you say amen on that? right there as we transition into the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Faye Merrill, for bringing us to this point in our online service this Lord's Day morning. Hallelujah. I direct our attention today to the book of Daniel, going now into the Old Testament, Daniel, the eighth chapter, reading from verse 23 to 27, Daniel chapter 8. And we've been looking at the subject matter of storm readiness. We use that as a caption for the series that we've been going through. We've done two parts, and this morning is part three. Part three. If this message or these this series has touched you in any way. I trust that you've been sharing the good news. I trust that you've been communicating this good gospel with friends and family members. And let me say up front, share this video this morning. Don't wait. Don't delay. Click that share button and get this message out there. This is a, a, a subject matter that we don't get enough teaching about. We hear about a lot of things. We hear about how to get rich quick. We hear about a whole lot of things. We hear about how to keep unforgiveness in our hearts. They teach that in churches. Yeah, you, did you know that? <laughs> how to maintain unforgiveness and how to hold on to grudges. You can learn a lot of stuff in church, but they don't tell you about what's coming on the pipeline relative to the last days that we're now living in. So please share this, this video. Storm Readiness Part 3 and uh, Daniel chapter 8 verse 23 to 27, reading from the New King James Version gets our attention today. And it reads thus, And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features or fierce characteristics, who understands sinister schemes. His power shall be mighty, but not 
by his own power. He shall destroy fearfully or extraordinarily and shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. This relates, of course, to the children of God, the Jewish remnant. This refers to the Jews, Israelites. Verse 25, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. And he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without human means. Verse 26. And the vision of the evenings and mornings which was told is true. Therefore seal up the vision. For it refers to many days in the future. Verse 27. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for days. Afterward, I arose and went about the king's business. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood it. I trust today that the ministry of the word that has already been lifted before the Lord in prayer will find a resting place in your heart and your heart, the soil of your heart would be fertile ground into which wonderful things can be placed and from which wonderful things shall come. So we've been examining some of the events that will take place during the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation. It is a period of time that is about to come, which we've likened to a Category 7 super storm. The number 7 is a biblical number of completion. That's God's number of completion. God is wrapping things up. Clearly, uh, this great tribulation refers to a period of time which the Bible refers to as Jacob's trouble. It will be made up of two three and a half year periods. Two three and a half year periods equaling a seven year period of time. It will be a time of unspeakable horrors and trials. However, none of us who are saved by Jesus' shed blood will need to worry about these events. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we are challenged to share these truths and help warn people before the eyelids of our generation close. If you're not saved this morning and you're listening to this preacher from Barbados, it is crucial that you come to Christ today. Don't put it off. Today, you must be born again. Our attention today will be given to the man or the personality behind this superstorm. He will be none other than Satan's right hand man, <laughs> the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Note that Christ is sovereign. He is the God-man, if you will, above all of life's storms. But the Antichrist is the devil's agent. This is the devil's sidekick. <laughs> he will be the man behind the superstorm. God is above the storm. But the Antichrist will be behind the the super storm. The devil has a counterfeit for almost everything that God has. Study it. Think about it. I don't have time to flesh that point out. But I will share just one little nugget with you. The triune God can boast of a unique relationship between the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Spirit. We know that. The triune God. Satan, watch it now. Satan, Lucifer, has tried to duplicate this, and he will boast of himself, his sidekick, the Antichrist, 
and the man of sin, the man of sin, the man of sin will promote the agenda of the Antichrist and the Antichrist will promote the agenda of Lucifer, Satan. So the Antichrist gets our attention today. He will be the man behind this superstorm, which God will allow for his own redemptive purposes, his own redemptive plans to unfold. Remember now, God is sovereign. And don't you ever forget that. Satan and his sidekicks are nothing but imps, puppets, and pawns in God's hands. The Antichrist will be powerful. He will be deceitful. He will be intelligent. He will be brutal, ruthless, and well organized. Make a note of some of those characteristics. I hope you got them down. Powerful, deceitful, intelligent. He will be brilliant, brutal, ruthless, well organized. He will represent the proverbial pinnacle of all that man can achieve apart from God. He will be the closest thing then to an incarnation of the devil himself. The closest thing. Because he will not be the devil, but he will be the closest thing to the incarnation of Satan. So, struck against that backdrop this morning, let us now peel back the layers of this super storm and see what the Bible has to say about him are you ready going from verse 23 of our text daniel 8 verse 23 in this third part of storm readiness the series the man behind the storm the antichrist and from that broad point i will share with us three sub points and i'm out of your way the man behind the storm, the Antichrist. Our text tells us that in the end times, a fierce king, a fierce king will stand up, as it were. But what are the signs of his appearing? <laughs> Can we know when this man will come on the scene? The answer to that question is both yes and no. No one knows uh, as yet exactly who the Antichrist is or precisely when he will show up. But the Bible does tell us of certain signs that will accompany this man's appearance. This man's appearing. I'd like to consider some of these signs this morning. First of three sub-points. Consider the situation of the world, the situation that the world will be in at the time of the Antichrist's coming on the stage. When this Narcissus makes his entrance, the world will be in an awful condition. This is evidenced by two passages of scripture that reference the end times. Luke 17 verse 26 to 27 Luke 17, 26 to 27, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1 to 5. Much teaching will be happening this morning, as has been the case over the last two weeks. And uh, that's important. When people teach the Word of God, people who want to learn, learn something from the Word of God. So I want to just give you that last portion there that I just mentioned, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, and it reads thus, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, 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 oh, I mentioned that already, sorry about that. Unholy, <laughs> without natural affection. You hear that? Without natural affection. 
They will have affection, but it will be unnatural. I could break that down, but let me keep, let me stay focused. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. In other words, they will see a good thing and call it evil. And they will call evil good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, very religious, very religious, very religious, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's the word of the Lord. That had nothing to do with the pastor. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is easy to see that our world already bears these characteristics. You and I don't have to look far. You don't, you, you, once upon a time, you may have to do a little bit of digging, but you only got to wake up. Open your eyes, open your ears, go on the internet, turn on the TV, go on Netflix. You don't have to go far. Newspaper, you don't have to internet all over your backyard. You don't have to go far at all. I believe that our world is already ripe, if you ask me, for this man behind the storm to appear. So let's continue peeling back the layers uh -huh, of this super storm as we delve deeper. Can I go deeper this morning and show you a little bit about this Antichrist, the man behind the storm? Not only do you have the situation of the world, but secondly, you've got the perversion of religion. The perversion of of religion. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 tells us that this man of sin will appear during a time of religious apostasy. That is a, a departing from the faith where people are given to backsliding. They have departed from the faith, from the call that God has put on their lives. And uh, there will be a great falling away. The Bible refers to this religious apostasy as precisely that. A falling away. And I will read verse 3 of Second Thessalonians chapter 2 for you. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay? So this refers to a time when organized, visible religion will depart from the doctrines of the word of God. Since the New Testament was written for and about us as believers, it makes sense to conclude that this falling away will be apparent in churches, in our churches, and our fellowships, denominations, which operate under the umbrella of Christianity. Please know that just because a church or a denomination calls itself a Christian fellowship does not automatically mean that this is so. Please make a note of that. As a matter of fact, the days in which we live are characterized by a rapid departure from the foundational truths of Christianity. And you know what I'm talking about. Be warned. They tell us that to be warned, to be forewarned, is to be forearmed. Please be forewarned. <laughs> I remember when growing up, having first come to Christ as a young man and uh, wet behind the ears, but passionate, desirous of knowing this Jesus and getting into the word of the Lord, establishing friends who were Christians and getting ready to say bye-bye to those friends that were not Christians. Come on now. I remember growing up as a young man like that. And if I... Had spoken with someone 
And they said that they were a Christian, or he or she was a Christian. You basically knew what they believed. And that wasn't many years ago. You had a pretty good handle. If they said, I'm a Christian, you, you could almost walk away and say, okay, I, 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 could, I could almost vote for you. I know what you believe, and we're on the same page. Amen. Hallelujah. Exchange numbers, contact information. There might have been a few doctrinal differences, but for the most part, the person believed in the virgin birth of Christ. The person believed in the life and ministry of Jesus. The person believed in Christ's substitutionary death and burial. And of course, in his resurrection and the fact that he's coming again. He's coming to receive and to rapture a bride, a blood-washed bride home to glory. That's basically what a Christian would have believed. In other words, a Christian was a person who had an active personal relationship with Jesus and accepted everything that the Bible taught concerning Christ. But today, Lord have mercy. But today, that's not the case. My, how things have changed. A person may deny the virgin birth and still claim to be a Christian. What a thing. What a thing. A person may call themselves a Christian and cast doubt on the accuracy and authenticity of the Bible. What a thing. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. And they will tell you, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian. Yeah, I believe in God. And they're expecting to go to heaven. But they will still, and in the same breath, cast doubt on the authenticity of God's holy word as we have it. A person may doubt that Jesus really died and rose from the dead and still claim that they're saved. I'm saved. But I don't really believe he died. Oh, maybe he swooned. He just passed out. And then in the tomb, in the coolness of the tomb, he resuscitated. Listen, let me tell you something. If you don't believe that that physical body of Jesus Christ, who was God and man, actually died. And that that physical body was buried in a tomb, a borrowed grave that wasn't even Christ's. A borrowed tomb. And that on the third day, he arose from that tomb if you have a problem believing that don't expect to stand face to face and see Jesus don't expect to hear well done good and faithful servant enter on into the joy of thy salvation because it ain't gonna happen these are fundamental truths doctrinal truths and if you trifle with them if you tamper with them if you toy with them if you tinker with them you're gonna fall short of the mark and there will be no place in God's holy heaven for you. No, you are not saved. No, you are not. You cannot tinker with these specific lockdown doctrines and tell me that you expect to have a seat in glory. It's amazing what people will exchange for the truth of the gospel of Christ these days. Something is wrong with this kind of picture. A person may claim to be a Christian. Watch this now. And, and, and you, you know full well what I'm talking about. A person may claim to be a Christian. <laughs> Listen, if you don't laugh, you will cry here. Claim to be a Christian. Yet, yet, they publicly refuse to forgive their brothers and sisters in Christ. Publicly, not just privately, and both are wrong. <laughs> but publicly refuse to forgive their brothers and, Christ and sisters in Christ. But yeah, man, I'm on my way to glory. Really? Really now? Think again. I tell you today, they are not Christians. They are charlatans. You're getting the words mixed up. Wrong C-H. I tell them I say so. <laughs> you are not a Christian. You are a charlatan. We are living in the midst of a great falling away. Cults are growing by leaps and bounds. While genuine Christianity constantly finds itself under the gun from society, from governments, and organized religion. I have to use that word, organized religion. And there is such a thing. 
When denominations have to take votes, Lord have mercy. When denominations, fellowships <laughs> got to take votes mm, on whether to marry homosexuals or not. Uh oh. <laughs> when they have to take votes on whether or not to allow homosexuals to be ordained or to preach in pulpits. When you've got to vote for that, something is wrong. Grossly, grossly wrong. There are things that are so firmly locked down, nailed down in the word of God. That there should never be any question or doubt concerning them. Never. But that's what's happening today in churches. That's what's happening today in this, this generation that we're living in. However, we, hallelujah. <laughs> however, we are seeing every major doctrine in the Bible coming under attack now. That's what's, that's what's happening in our generation. All the major, if you were to delineate them and list them, all the major doctrines, some of them I touched on just now, all the five pillars of the gospel of Christ that I mentioned on the uh, last Sunday night for the drive-in church experience, the sequel. When, when I preached that message the, um, on God's pill, the gospel, and I mentioned the five pillars, the five pillars of the gospel of Christ. All of these specific doctrines are now coming under attack. These are the major doctrines of the church of Christ. And they're now under attack. All of them. Check it out. Don't take my word for it. Do your research. We see churches and denominations turning away from the truth of the gospel with alarming speed. Apostasy is on the rise. And I say to us, if this is the case now, and it is. I ask you this morning, what hinders the Antichrist from appearing on the stage at any moment now. What hinders him? Answer me that. What hinders him? What will keep this super storm of tribulation from starting any minute now? What will hold it back? What's keeping it back? I'm glad you asked. There is but one event that must take place before this Antichrist can be revealed. I know we're peeling back the layers of the storm so that you can get a glimpse of who he is and what he be like. But there is but one event that must take place before he can come on the stage of life. Before he can be revealed and before the great tribulation period of seven years can commence. But as we peel back the layers of the pending superstorm, we'll see a little bit more now of what the Bible has to say about this Antichrist. We've seen the situation of the world. We've considered the perversion of religion. And now thirdly and finally, the subtraction of the church. The subtraction of the church. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 6 to 7. And I read it for you. And now you know what is restraining him. Referring to the Antichrist. Referring to this, this Antichrist. This man behind the superstorm. Now you know what is restraining him. From being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested or revealed in his own appointed time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work in the world. But it is restrained only until he who restrains is removed or taken out or subtracted from the way. These verses teach us the truth then that the church must be removed or subtracted from the equation 
before the Antichrist can be revealed. The Bible tells us, verse 7, the Bible tells us in verse verse 7 that the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, the spirit, the spirit of Antichrist, no, the spirit of Antichrist, all right, the way of thinking, the system is already at work. The system, the system fam, is the system man, is already at work in the world. That is why we can see the evidence all around us as we touched on earlier in the first point. However, there are two forces, if you will. There are two uh, specifics, let me use that word, two specifics that hinder him from stepping onto the stage, the world stage, and making his presence known. What are those two hindrances? The church and the blessed Holy Spirit. The church and the blessed Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They go together now, because remember, as the church, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. Let me make it make it real simple, real, real straight. The Holy Spirit is here in the earth because of the church. Because of the church. When the church is taken out, the Holy Spirit will be removed. The Holy Spirit has no need to be present in the earth with the church being absent. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible tells us, and I don't need to go all the way back there, but you must understand these things. Acts chapter 2, the church was being birthed. And at the birthday, or the birth date of the church, the Holy Spirit came and filled the apostles, filled the 120 that were in the room. And ever since, along the way, the believers have been filled and are being filled by God's precious Holy Spirit. So with the church, with the believers out, the blood washed bride out of the way, the Holy Spirit is out of here. Can you see that? That is important. You see the two hindrances then, once they're out of the way, what will transpire? It's an open door. It's a gateway for the Antichrist to come forth and stand atop the world stage and to do what he now will have to do. The work of the Spirit in convicting and judging the hearts of men is a tremendous retaining dynamic in the world. John chapter 16 verse 8 to 11. John 16, 8 to 11. I'll let you read that on your own steam. The Spirit's work in filling the church. The Holy Spirit's work in filling the lives of the born-again believers to stand up against evil is also a great hindrance to the work of the Spirit of Antichrist. And I am sure I mentioned this uh, two Sundays ago. If it were not for the church in the earth, let me, let me, let me bring it right on home to you. If it were not for the church in your locale, in your country, sir, in your island, wherever you are, you could be in the United Kingdom, in the United States, United Arab Emirates, wherever you are. If it weren't for the church of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right on up into your cocoon, in your street, down the road, up the road in the, a neighboring precinct if it weren't for that little local assembly that you wish they would turn out the lights lock up the doors and stop confusing people you would have the full entourage of satan's darts all of his demons his devils you wouldn't even know if you're coming or if you're going the full onslaught of what satan and his imps will do to this world would be on your doorstep somebody ought to lift up your hands and declare right now thank god for the church it is the church that's keeping this place buoyant it is the church of jesus christ that's keeping us alive because it's the spirit of God that brings life and the spirit brings life into the life of the born again believer when that happens I'm happy to report that there's a connection there's a connectivity and heaven kisses earth and earth responds when heaven kisses it and so governments are able to do what they do businesses are able to operate the way they operate ministries are able to function the way how they function and you thought it was because some wise person was voted and put up in office it's because the church is alive in your country or in your island that 
enables governments to be able to wake up in the morning and to sit down around a table and to be able to determine what should happen and what should not happen. For the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of Almighty God. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. Somebody ought to rejoice with me. This is a good time for you to get on that chat. Send those emojis flying up and down the screen right now. Because if you are part and parcel of the church of Christ, this day is a good day. Let's rejoice in the goodness of the Lord. Amen and amen. I'm happy to be a part of the church. I am happy to be a part of Christ's church. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I could get excited today. Amen. Amen. I am a part of the church and I am a part of what God's doing in the earth. Because I'm alive and Jesus has got me in his hand, I'm able to help bring stability to a world that's rocking out of control. Somebody ought to go ahead and rejoice. Rejoice with this child of God today. Amen. From CTCC, we give you praise. God, we bless your wonderful name. This is the reality. This is the goodness of the Lord. This is the goodness. See how good God is? See how important you are? Mm -hmm. So my friends, I want you to understand today the Holy Spirit's working, filling the church to stand up against all manner of evil right in the world, in your neck of the woods. And the spirit of Antichrist can't deal with that, doesn't know what to do with it, can't fight that. However, however, one day coming soon, both of these entities shall be removed. Oh, what a day, what a day. Oh, when we're taken up. Oh, when we are raptured. Ah, hapa, gesumatha. When we are rapturo, <laughs> the Latin. Ah, at the moment of the rapture, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then those that remain shall be caught up together to meet them in the air, and so shall we be evermore. With the Lord. Can you see him now? Oh, can you see him now? Can you see him now? This is a good time to remind you then that the tribulation, the great tribulation, which will be the next thing on God's timeline, is not for us. It's not for the church. Oh, rejoice, child of God. Ah, it is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30. Verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, time of Jacob's trouble. It was told to Daniel, it was told to Daniel that the tribulation was a time for Israel. I hope you're seeing that. I hope you're seeing that. Because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Remember that. So time of Jacob's trouble. It's really for Israel. That's Jeremiah 30, verse 7. And then over in Daniel, you can begin to connect the dots and see the parallel passages so that you can check my, 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 my hermeneutics. Hey, 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 come on somebody. I hope you're learning something. Daniel now, it was told to Daniel that the tribulation was a time for Israel. You see that? Daniel 9 verse 27. One of the greatest proofs, as if that weren't enough. <laughs> one of the greatest proofs that the church will not see the tribulation is Christ's promise now. Let's move out of the Old Testament. Christ's promise to the church in Philadelphia. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Revelation 3 and 10. And I'll read that one for you. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, uh -huh, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see that? I also will keep thee. Somebody lift up your hands right now and just go ahead. Just go ahead and say, God, thank you for your keeping power. When I couldn't keep me, you kept me. Thank you for your keeping power. Kept by the power of God. 
Amen. Glory to God. Kept, 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 kept by the power of God. There are some who would tell us, however, that the church will go through the first three and a half years. Yeah, you got all kind of groups out there. Right? All kind of groups. Post trips, pre trips, mid trips, all kind of groups. I'm surprised they haven't thought of another one. Uh, and, and, and another theory. Oh, well, you know, the church will um, we'll just go through the first 18 months. How about that? <laughs> All kind of crazy groups just to get a following. Just to get a following. It's all about attention, power, prestige. When the Bible is clear, clear concerning when the rapture will happen. A pre-tribulation rapture. Clear. But yet, there are those that will tell us that the church will go through the first three and a half years of the tribulation. But here's the catch on this one. To believe this, you have to believe that most of the Lord's prophecies to Israel also apply directly to the church. Now the truth is that the word of God is God's love letter to his people. So there's application. You hear the, you hear, you hear the difference? That's a different word. Yeah, oh, application. There is application from every portion of scripture for the child of God. That's God's love letter to me. But you would have to believe that the prophecies that were spoken to Israel are specific also to the church. And that would be a big problem. That would be a big problem. Now, if you're not right with God, sir, ma'am, young person, friend, wherever you are right now listening to this preacher, this morning, be it noon or night, if you are not right with God, then you need to get saved. It is imperative. If the Lord doesn't return in your lifetime, you will die. Yes, we all will. <laughs> and you will go to a real place that no one likes to talk about these days called hell. No one wants to hear about that four letter word. But hell is real. It's a real geographical location in the center of the earth with specific coordinates as found in the Bible. The Bible is there. It is there. The Bible tells you these things. And if Christ does return in your lifetime and comes for his bride, his blood washed bride, you find you lost if you have not given your life to him. If you're not living for Christ, he will find you lost. You'll be lost like a sock. You will enter into the great tribulation period. Yes, you will. Because that's the next thing on, the, on the, the timeline after the rapture. And you will very likely give your worship to the Antichrist. Ah. Oh. No, 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 no. What a thing. Oh, dear. Imagine that. That you would have listened to a message like this. Refused to make the only decision that truly makes sense. And then get left behind. Go into the great tribulation period. And end up giving your worship to the devil. Via the Antichrist. When you could... I've given your worship to your creator, God. What a thing. What a mistake to make. You say, Pastor, what passage would you use to support that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12. And I will let you read that on your own steam. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12. I have one question for you before I close. And it is simply this. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? That's a very pointed question. And I hope that you've got an appropriate answer. 
As I close, our world is now poised to enter a time of trouble like it has never ever seen before. Like nothing she has ever witnessed previously. What happens to us will largely depend on what we do with Christ. Listen, what God does with you will largely depend, it will be predicated on what you do with his son. What are you going to do with Christ? What are you going to do with him? Will you accept him or will you reject him? These are pointed questions that are coming your direction. I urge you today to come to Jesus. I urge you to come to Christ, not for a man, not for me, not for a church. Not even to be the member of a church or a member, but for Christ. Do it for Christ and for yourself. Because listen, only what's done for Christ will last. Time is running out. And only what we do for Jesus will have any consequence in eternity. And eternity is too long for me to play the fool. I hope you're hearing me today. If you're saved, you're born again Christian, and you've been journeying with us in this message throughout this series, I would ask that you do as I have done and as I pledge to continue doing. That is to consider your life. Consider your life. See if you're pointing people to Christ or if you're turning people away from Him. Are you portraying Christ with your attitudes, your responses, your reactions when things happen to you that are unfavorable? Are you portraying Christ or are you betraying Christ? Which one? If you're a Christian, it is incumbent on us, us. That includes me. And I begin with Andre. Let it begin with me. I don't have a problem with that. Let this begin with Andre. And I pray it will spill out to the rest of the born again Christians who are tracking us online right now. You are a Christian, ma'am. Sir, you are a Christian. You're a child of God. Are you drawing people to Jesus? Or are you turning people away from the Lord? And I say to you, Please do not fear the Antichrist. I just felt that's important to drop that there. Do not fear the Antichrist. The Antichrist can't do you anything. Please remember, we are going to be long gone out of this place. Home to glory. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Gone. Before he comes on the world stage. All that is necessary is for us to make sure we pull as many people around us and that we draw all of them to Christ. And I pray that you would begin by doing that, or if you've already started and that is your custom, continue doing that by sharing this video. Share this message. You'll be surprised to know how many people are now online. That number has increased exponentially since COVID-19. And I believe God set it up that way so that the gospel will be tracked even faster now. Because oh, everybody, everybody, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and each child, everybody on the internet. Don't miss the opportunity. Share this video right now. Before I pray, before I pray. Last question. Where will you be when Satan's sidekick takes the world? by storm and I'm using these words very deliberately where will you be when Satan's sidekick the man behind the storm takes the storm <laughs> when he takes this world by storm when Daniel looked into these things the text told us that he fainted and he became ill and Daniel was a godly man. This morning, I wonder, what effect will these words, this message have on your heart? I want to pray with you today. I want to pray. I want to believe God for those who have never made that transition from darkness to light. Who've never taken stock of their eternity, taken time out to say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner.
That's you today. I want you to look into my eyes. I'm not going to ask you to bow your head. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do. But today, look at me in the eye. The windows of the soul. The eyes are the windows to the soul. And I want to lead you in this simple prayer of repentance where you ask Christ, Christ, to be merciful to you. And if you put your life in the hands of Christ, you will never, ever, 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 ever have to worry about the Antichrist. Pray like this, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess I am a sinner. And I am in need of a Savior. I bow my knees to you. I turn everything over to you. Forgive me of my ways. Cancel my sin debt. Wash me with your shed blood. By faith, I am a child of yours from this moment onwards. And I ask you to put my name in your book of life. In that book are all the names of those who have prayed prayers just like this. In Jesus' name, thank you for your shed blood that cleanses me right now. My sins are forgiven. My destiny is whole. Christ's sake, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you were maybe in a backslidden state, I also want to say to you, you've come back to Jesus. That's good. Maybe you have prayed that prayer before, but you've not been living the life. It's a good time to turn over a new leaf, a new book. Not just a new leaf, a whole new book. This is a new book. And God is the author and the finisher of it all. So God bless you. From Calvary Temple, I want to say thank you for logging on. Thank you for being part and parcel of the online platforms. If you are on Facebook or you are on YouTube, more power to you. Please don't forget to like this video, like it, love it, wow it, care it, because there's another emoji now I see that they have on Facebook. So you, you, they've given you another option now. You can care it. <laughs> but whatever you do, share it. Ah, how about that? Whatever you do with it, share it in Jesus' mighty name. And let someone know concerning the dark days that we're living in and show them that you're doing your part to be a light, a light, a gospel light in a closing generation. So from Calvary, the Lord bless you all. Thank you so much for being part and parcel of the service today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe as well on our YouTube channel. You go on over there and click subscribe so you can get all of the downloads that we place there, all of the videos, all the services. And there are many, there's a plethora. Maybe you should go on over there and watch a few of them, uh, about 16, 17 weeks of them. God bless you for doing that on our Facebook page as well. So thank you for liking, following us there on Facebook as those numbers continue to grow exponentially. I am amazed. I'm amazed. Tens of thousands of visitors, viewers every single month. I mean, scores of thousands, scores of thousands. This is amazing. So God bless you. Those of you who've been giving and donating, more power to you. And uh, I would also want to say to you, may the Lord continue to pour into your pocketbooks, into your uh, into your cupboards. May he continue to bless you. May he continue to put you on the front line, as it were, and to ensure that you are never lacking anything but provision the same song that we sung back up at the beginning of the service the lord will be your provider in the name of jesus your investment areas all of your savings accounts i pray that there will be more than enough in your baskets so that you can bless others i think everybody i've ever met always delighted in being a blessing to someone else so god bless you thank you so much for giving and giving and continuing to give if you want to follow along with that or to join us in that regard cibc uh, is our bank and the savings account number you'll see it there at the foot of your screen is 72100312 so from calvary temple community church i look forward to reconnecting with you once again next sunday morning at 10 o'clock and again, thank you so much for all of you who made the Drive-In Church experience the sequel, the tremendous success that it was. Stay tuned. We'll be coming at you again in the month of August, all things being equal. So praise the Lord from Calvary. We love you. God bless you. And bye-bye.